posture. A good, good posture. Hey guys, welcome back to Wine Beast. My name's Adam and this is my friend Jeremiah. And um, I know it's been a little while since we posted. Sorry to like maybe the three people who are watching this that we weren't equipped. <laughs> who were waiting <laughs> yeah. for the next episode. Patiently waiting. Haven't left their condos. Or their but uh, we're back. And uh, what are we beasting on tonight there, Jer? We've got something special. Yeah, so tonight is a little bit of a different episode. Um, we've got some wines that we can talk about in a second. But tonight we're actually reviewing a product that was sent to us uh, called the Repor Wine Saver. And we'll include the link in the description and things like that. Um, but this is an interesting product that we're gonna discuss. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we've got a wine here that uh, I opened two weeks ago. And um, the story is basically, I'm off red wine because I'm whitening my teeth. I opened this bottle before I started whitening my teeth. And I was like, oh shit, I need to uh, conserve this. So we thought, what better uh, opportunity to try out the Repor, which is basically a cork with some kind of like uh, mineral type thing inside that absorbs the oxygen that's left in the bottle and creates like an inner gas between the remaining wine and the cork um, so the wine isn't exposed to oxygen. So they claim that this guy can go what, like weeks, weeks months? months. Um, you know, possibly a game changer um, for, you know, keeping and storing wine. The only thing that I um, found as a drawback is, like, you have to keep the bottle upright. You can't store it back on its side because you obviously don't want the wine coming in contact with that um, element inside there. So if you don't have a very big fridge like I do, it was difficult to, like, have the bottle standing up all the time in the fridge with this... Uh, cork height of this thing right yeah. so anyways Jer is actually going to be trying this wine for yep. the first time um and seeing if it's still if it's still good after two weeks you know normally a red wine you open it up you keep it in the fridge maybe two three days yeah um what's left over so it's going to be interesting to see to hear your thoughts on on this guy tonight and then and then wine we have tonight is uh grand vin de Poyac. uh it's a french wine from Bordeaux. From Bordeaux. And of course, we've got uh, a Menagerie Pour here. We've got the stag, the stag tag, yeah. uh, from our good friends at Menagerie Pours. Uh, shout out to Darren at Menagerie Pours for sending us uh, all that gear a few a few weeks ago. I've got the uh, Grange of Prince Edward Almanac uh, from uh, Prince Edward County here in Ontario, uh, which is like a white blend. Um, that they suggest would go good with grilled seafood, barbecue pork, mushroom risotto, and Thai curries. And I gotta say, uh, so far, so good, uh, pretty delicious. But the real question yeah. here is, how has this wine fared after two weeks in the bottle with the Repor Wine Saver? So yeah. why don't you, I mean, I smelt it. I, I, uh, I, I nosed it and it's got yeah. a great nose to it still. Um, after two weeks, and I was like, "Oh man, I want to taste that," yeah. but I don't want to ruin my teeth whitening, yeah. which I paid. So Adam of conveniently is uh, whitening his teeth, and and uh, I'm drinking the two-week-old wine. Um, <laughs> but uh, before I do that, just quickly, so Adam showed the report. As it, as you get it, uh, you'll see that there's a bit of a foil cap on the top. So what'll happen is um, you will want to peel that off, stick it into the bottle, and make sure it's a nice tight seal. And then what'll happen is all the oxygen in the bottle and in the wine will be drawn up into the cap, into the minerals and uh, the compounds that they have in there. Because um, normally what would happen is if you just put a cork into a bottle or you put like some kind of a stopper, really what's happening is you're displacing air. You're not absorbing any kinds of, uh, and you're not absorbing yeah, you're the You're basically, basically sealing um, some oxygen back in there and then the, the wine's gonna age. Yeah. Um, you know, the crazy thing is I've seen products out there. There's a product called, um, the Coravin, which is like a, um, an opener that allows you, it puts like a needle through the cork and it allows you to access the wine through the cork and without actually uncorking the bottle. And so the idea is when you remove the Coravin, or I don't know if you remove it at all, this product's like a few hundred bucks, so I've never tried it, but I've seen it in action, that you know, you're not actually uncorking the bottle, so you've never removed um, 
you, you've never removed the oxygen from the bottle and the wine doesn't oxidize. So that device is like hundreds of dollars. It's a way of like going through the cork into the wine and then like pumping it out. Um, and then you, you know, you could potentially keep that bottle still corked for like years. Yeah. These guys, how much were these? these I, th I think it's like nine bucks for four. Yeah, about nine bucks uh, US because uh, it is an American product. Um, yeah, and I mean, a really uh, simple packaging. You get uh, four in a box. Um, so, and, and the instructions are really simple. Remove the foil, stop the bottle, come back later, unstop the bottle and pour um, and enjoy. And when the wine is done, uh, just get rid of your repour stopper and then start again with a fresh stopper. So it sounds like it lasts for about a bottle depending on opening and closing. Yeah. I don't think you're supposed to reclose it. Yeah, I well, think I think it's like a one-time use. I feel like you put the cork in because I didn't open that guy at yeah. all. It could probably it probably won't be the best for your wine if you're popping that thing in and out, but it does say you could reinsert the repour. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's multiple uses from wine. Probably yeah. the same bottle though, because I don't know if you'd want to get into like putting this same using this one at multiple different times, multiple different bottles. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for maximum freshness at that price. They're basically kind of like disposable, which is another thing we talked about. Don't know the recyclability of this product. It's got something inside, so I don't know that you could just throw this into the plastics uh, recycling. So, yeah, and, it, and that'll vary from city to city depending on. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, you'll have to check out the website, um, which I would recommend do anyways to learn more about this product. Uh, Adam will include the link, uh, but you can follow them on Instagram at Repour Wine Saver. Um, they're all over Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Yeah, so, I've, I've seen a lot of things that are saying like this could be a, like a game changer for, yeah. um, you know, being able, this was the one thing, like the conundrum when you open a bottle, I mean, you pretty much have to drink the whole thing in a couple, yeah. of, a couple of days or one sitting and not everybody wants to do that. And, um, you know, a lot of people might be opening like a special bottle and then want to put it aside for a few weeks and then, and then have a glass. So, anyways, I think enough talk about the repour. Yeah. I feel like we should get to this wine. Let's get to the. Let's get I've to the. I've also got um, test. A, a, a nice little cheese board that I made here for Jeremiah with some uh, camembert, some oka, some uh, spreadable oka, some nuts, and then this is the the kicker here. This is some uh, honey from the roof of our office building. We actually have beehives on the roof of our office building. And um, the landlord of the office building gave us some honey yeah. from, so this is a hyper local honey, uh, unpasteurized product. Um, and I'm really, uh, you can see how dark it is, to try that. right? Cause obviously like the bees are, you know, this, the color comes from the different kinds of flowers. The bees are, are pollinating and stuff like that. Um, I've had some at home and tea and stuff like that. Um, I'm on this keto thing, so I don't need a lot of sugar right now, but it's actually amazing. It was really good. Anyways, I know we've been building this thing up for the last five minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, now is the, the, the moment of truth on the MLT, yeah. we'll see what happens. It's interesting. Is it still maybe a little cold? Because I, like I say, I had that guy in the fridge. Um, I don't know if it's had enough time to come up to temp. Like I say, it's, it smelled great. The nose was really nice. It's interesting. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't say, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sorry for the pause. It's interesting to like try to decipher what, what it tastes like because let's put it this way. The first thing you're going to know is it like, it's not off, right? It's no, it's definitely not off at no. all. Um, not sour, not no. like, you know, basically wine kind of when you leave it in the fridge too long. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's it, like it becomes cooking wine at that point. Yeah. It, or it kind of tastes like grape juice at yeah. that point. No, it's uh, definitely not that. It's, um, it tastes like just open bottle of wine. Yeah, it really does. Well, that's great. Tastes like, yeah. you know, I get that smoke. I'm glad like because cask. that was actually a pretty, um, expensive bottle yeah. <laughs> and to like, um, open it just to have the one glass like I did. Uh, if we didn't have the repour, then yeah. you know, that would have been a waste. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that it's still no, I think I think palatable. that repour did its job. Um, yeah, I definitely do. It's yeah. uh, so two weeks, I did this at home for about uh, three to five days. And I mean, I did, you wouldn't have known that it was opened. 
um, with the, the wine that I was drinking at home. So, you know what? I think it's a pretty solid product. Yeah, and I mean, I guess the point too is that obviously a product like this saves you money. So, if you're not planning on drinking a whole bottle in the next day or two, or if you're having friends over, but you, you have a great wine that you like want to have a glass of and maybe drink later on, you know, you're not going to waste wine that way and, and you know, end up dumping it out because it, it's gone bad. So, uh, for I think it's good. Like, if I want to open something, have a glass of something, yeah. try it, and then bring that, like, yeah. a bring few days a later so that you can yeah. try it, you know. Yeah. So, it's great. Holiday is coming up. It's uh, Thanksgiving here in Canada, so lots of wine is going to be uh, going on. But uh, with Christmas coming up and things like that, it might make a great stocking stuffer. Um, they come in different packs, as I mentioned. This is a pack of four. They come with eight and, and much more than that. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's a pretty solid product. And uh, you know, we like to review different products. We don't get like sponsor or anything. They send us they send us these four, which are like nine bucks in the mail. Uh, to test out and leave it to our own opinion. So I think without any bias, I think it actually works. Yeah, this is our honest opinion. Yeah. Um, it's not like uh, yeah, they it's... paid us for anything. It's just people are sending us product. Um, yeah, I have something here that we weren't sent. Um, the Corksicle. Uh, this is a gift someone got me for Christmas one year, which I'm actually using to try and keep this white. You can kind of just see it in the bottle there. Basically, it's like a, a freezable element that you stick down in the bottle and then you can actually pour through it so it doubles as a spout. So it's supposed to keep chilled wine already cold or uh, bring room temperature wine, if it's red wine, to sort of a better serving temperature. Um, this is a cool product too. I uh, figured I'd talk about it while we have it out. Um, the only thing is about it is you have to pour wine out first to actually yeah. put it in because of the displacement. Other than, otherwise, the wine's going to go everywhere. Um, it does work. Uh, the only thing is that happened was there's like some cork around the the outside of the thing, like the of the spout, so that it's like a cork and it seals tight. Um, some of that broke off actually, and I affixed it with some. Uh, crazy glue and now it's as good as new so oh, that cool. goes on and it just looks like a cork but oh, then there's a cap cool. and then you can just pour through it yep. and it aerates at the same time kind of like this just pour right through yeah. it. see the bubbles yeah it's a neat product too yeah and again shout out to uh so report check them out on instagram facebook pinterest um and twitter at report that's r-e-p-o-u-r wine saver uh check them out they're out of uh cedar rapids so should we talk about uh, what's going on lately? Yeah. Maybe talk about this cheese a little bit, which you said smells like um, a pair of socks that you've worn for a few days. Yeah, in you a know, row to like the gym. My wine game has gone up in the last few years. My cheese game is still not the best. Oh man! You know, I'm on that smoked gouda. That's, That's good. my favorite uh, cheese. Um, but what's going on? So I actually saw when I was walking over here that. Um, Shout out, you know, remember the the MTV days, so Jersey Shore, uh, Mike Sarantino, the guy who called himself The Situation. I'm yep. sure you watched Jersey Shore. Yep. Everybody did. Um, so he's going to jail for eight months for tax evasion. I think this has been an ongoing thing for like years. They've been yeah. trying to like... This doesn't out. surprise me. Yeah. I mean, he had like a series of workout videos, like a P90X yeah. type thing. Yeah. And so uh, he's going to go in jail for eight months, so... Um, don't want to be doing no tax evasion because you know no matter how famous you are, it's gonna catch up. You remember Wesley Snipes? Those, yeah, man, that Lauren ruined Hill Wesley had Snipes. some issues. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the prison cause. Don't fuck around prison with prison cause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Paulie D. That's yeah. Tax cabs here. Cabs here. Yeah. Prison bus is here. Yeah. Off you go, Mike. T-shirt time. Um, T-shirt time. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a whole other kind of time in prison, I'm sure. Uh, whole other kind of G shower time. <laughs> oh, savage. Uh, what else is going on? So, um, yeah, up here it's Canadian Thanksgiving. So that means that Monday we have a holiday. Um, and then shortly after they'll have, obviously... Uh, extra day to recover from. Yeah, extra day to recover from, from the long weekend. Lots of turkey and stuff like that. It's pretty much American Thanksgiving without all the amazing deals. Like the Black Friday. Yeah, we like they did a Canadian Black Friday, but like... I don't know. It's it just isn't the same, you know. And uh, 
so that's happening this weekend and then yeah I mean it's hard to believe we're like on a countdown for Christmas uh, in like two months or something it's it's pretty wild oh yeah and the Christmas stuff will be out everywhere soon like they don't even wait now until November yeah that's something with like I'm sure that I'm sure that most uh, North American places are like this like they've learned that like you know let's not wait until something is over let's not wait till you can enjoy Thanksgiving and like get it over with it's like as soon as Thanksgiving comes it's Christmas time yeah. Halloween is like an like a, a footnote yeah like here's a bunch of costumes get your kids costumes get the candy whatever and then it's right to be Christmas like you know you what I mean see that meme that I sent you that was like what the old block whenever a, a chain goes bankrupt like all the old blockbusters become those like Halloween li yeah, liquidation yeah. stores yeah. we got a few of those down in Toronto Toys R Us yeah yeah there's some on Queen Street like they become these like met like they're just like empty spaces that used to be like a mm -hmm. uh, uh, Microsoft store like an Xbox store that just didn't take off and now they're selling like offensive sexy yeah Native American sexy costumes kittens, yeah <laughs> sexy yeah. avatars whatever <laughs> yeah everything sexy but uh, yeah, these stores become these like massive Halloween stores and I'll be honest I've gone there. I bought stuff from there before and like you pop in and it's like oh I need a costume idea if I'm going to this Halloween party, but okay. Here's a question actually What was the last thing you dressed up as for Halloween? Hmm Because I don't feel like you I've ever gone to a Halloween thing with you um, in all these years Andy Warhol probably Andy Warhol? Yeah, I could see you doing yeah, that. Yeah, and my wife dressed up as uh, Edie Sedgwick, so uh, Edie Sedgwick, Andy Warhol, yeah. and this was like in the year that like an like a Edie Sedgwick movie came out mm -hmm. with um, man, what's her name? Um, she was in um, Alfie with Jude Law. Oh, Sienna, Sienna Miller. Miller. Yeah. yeah, they dated. Yeah. I think for yeah. a while. I got married or mm -hmm. something. I liked Alfie. So she was <laughs> in a lot more than just a movie with Jude Law. Yeah, that yeah. movie actually. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that movie because I, I, I sort of saw Michael myself Kane's in that, in that movie. movie too. I know the original. Yeah. yeah, I sort of saw myself in that movie. Well, that's what it's supposed to do, right? And it's it scared me. It feels how like. he ends up at the end, and yeah. I was like, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's about right. a womanizer. Well, so Jerry's, no, 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 so Jerry's no, no, casting no, no, himself no, no, as a womanizer. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't say that. I was. It was someone who just he was single guy, you know, living in the city, just doing what he wanted to do, working sort of. Uh, I mean, I think he was driving. Womanizing. He wasn't woman. I don't know why he called womanizing. What do you call women doing that to men? Meninizing? What is it? Uh, I don't, don't know. I don't He's just know. living his life. It's not. Okay. I don't think it has all to right. be a womanizer. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, anyways, all right. but then at the end, he ends up all alone because he sort of screwed himself over. And I was like, holy yeah. shit! Like that could be he, you, uh, me. That could be anyone someday because you yeah. just like choose this lifestyle. And uh, yeah, I yeah. don't think it's. Uh, I don't think that's the ideal situation. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Um, anyways, so the last thing I dressed up, dressed up as for Halloween was actually with my girlfriend Kirsten. Uh, we dressed up for a party that my buddy was throwing. I wore a, net, a shirt that said Netflix. This is when Netflix and chill was like a, like just a come, thing. Just coming out. Yeah. yeah. Just So I like wore a Netflix just shirt. Just worn. With like um, an ice tray or something, and yeah. then she wore, she got all dressed up like as like sort of like wintry, like chill. So you know like how many Netflix people were chill. probably that that year? Oh, for sure. And like my idea came from a picture I saw of yeah. like an African American guy with a bag of ice and a shirt that said like Netflix. Oh, yeah. um, that's the thing. Like people now are dressing up as like concepts, like not like not like things, like or people. They're like. <laughs> it's like an abstract concept. Yeah, you're basically becoming a meme. Like, like, oh, I'm crushing despair. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm lit. Yeah. It's like I'm lit, or yeah. like some like thing right now that like is popular in, in uh, like texting, or I don't know, like something that you're texting about kids these days. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so that was I don't know. This Halloween, I mean, unless there's a party, actually, I think I'm going to a party. I don't know, but it's not going to be a ton of effort. Like, I I do respect people that like put a ton of effort into getting dressed up for Halloween because. I honestly think the older I get, the more I appreciate like traditions and like doing things that are, like, you know, like some people will skip uh, Thanksgiving or they'll skip, depending on your beliefs and all that stuff, uh, you skip certain holidays, but I actually think it's sort of like if you start missing, like skipping that stuff or paring it down, it sort of just becomes nothing. Like you do sound like you're getting old. All right, have you also developed a, like a pension for World War II history and yeah, <laughs> documentary? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I actually like. Uh, I don't know. You just like as you get older, you just like. I don't know. I'm only 
I'm not that old, but I, I guess I'm old man Jer. sentimental as I get older. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think you need to like keep those traditions and like stuff like that. Yeah, I mean traditions are uphold important. those things because yeah. I mean otherwise, what else is there? It's just a bunch of like day to day nonsense. There's no like meaning anchor. There's no anchor. Life is pointless. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Halloween's coming up, and then what else is going on? I got my hair cut today. I've got his hair cut. He's got the Caesar going on right now. Yeah. I'm trying to cover a blemish, yeah. so. I'm actually going to grow my hair out for the over the winter, I think. Go back to the Haramaya. the glory days of Haramaya. Haramaya. So when I first uh, was at the company we work for, uh, Adam joined our team from another department. My hair was quite long. and Beautiful uh, flowing locks. Beautiful flows of locks. And um, I basically had Haramaya, I think it was one of my names. Uh, hair Force One. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's no shortage of banter and taking a piss out of each other in uh, this group. That's for sure. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna grow it over the winter. I haven't done it in a long time. I've been getting these like fades and all that stuff, but I don't know. I think I might grow it out a little bit at least. Get a little length. Just get the get the beard grow, growing thick. I like just this. can't do a I'll huge tell you, beard like you. This is healthy. It's good for your skin, especially in the winter. It keeps me keeps my face from getting like dry. And like it's supposed to keep germs off of your face too, and like you know, what's sort of weird though is like your beard's like red. Yeah, I have and ginger. You have no red hair. Yeah, there's like you can see little ginger hairs in there. It's weird. I'm getting some gray in there yeah. too. There, yeah. mountain man. Uh huh. <laughs> like a trapper. Well, like you said, you're like both, a trapper. We're both getting old, <laughs> despite the fact that you're older than me. But you you got gray hair. Going. Oh, I got gray for sure. But yeah. like not. Uh, you know, you gotta keep it sh shaved down. You don't notice. That's it. the thing I noticed too. Is like where I got it cut today. The yeah. closer you get it cut, the less obvious the gray is. Like you can't. Oh, of see course, because it. it it doesn't reflect the light. Yeah. But it's weird that like when you get gray hair, it sort of starts on the sides. Mm. Like for guys, like why there? What would that mean? Like I, I notice it's everything like here. is a pattern, right? Like, and the same with baldness too, right? Like the men that get it. Um. There's only like five or six distinguishable like patterns yeah. that happen, and it just like that's your DNA. Like those cells, like those particular like follicles, are programmed to go first, and it's just like I don't know. It probably served some purpose back in the day, like in our evolution, but I don't well, know. I don't mind it. Honestly, I'm not like self conscious about. It. I would actually guess that like if you went bald back in the day, it showed like that you had a longer lifespan like okay yeah because back in the day like, like lifespan was only um even like there are parts in history where it's like 40 years old yeah. was old so like they they so. treated you like it showed that you had good let's quote good and you weren't sick mm. right like even though guys nowadays because they don't have the genes for uh it was like how baldness. does nature show that you're old yeah, without like the chiefs and all these like yeah. tribes and stuff like usually they're bald older guys that have like five ten wives yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever Warriors though would shave their heads so people didn't have anything to grab onto. Yeah, but that's so that's, the enemy but wouldn't that's have anything cosmetic. To grab that's onto. not genetic. Yeah, this is just a good strategy. Really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But older guys, it shows that you can like live longer and like your genes of like you haven't got sickness or anything. So I almost feel like that propelled the whole situation because all these um, women would have kids with guys who are older, balder guys because they were the chief or like senior people mm -hmm. and that perpetuated like the whole genetic thing. Right, yeah, it's like a strategy so like your genes remember yeah. like hey. Like you know how like birds like have loser. bright feathers yeah. to show like a mate that they're like yeah. you know, competitive or whatever. So you get with an older dude to get longevity well, in now, your genes. Now we gotta skip that. Now you get with an older person whether a guy or a girl depending if they're you know got a little coin. Wealth. Yeah, wealth, is, wealth has become the new mm. uh, supersedes genetics at this point. Did you try this cheese? I, I really like no, this I cheese. Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, um, so sorry for the delay on getting a new episode up. Um, it's been a few weeks, we know. Life but, gets, uh, gets in the way. Yeah, you know. but we'll keep episodes coming uh, now up until Christmas. Um, check out Repor Wine Saver again. Uh, I will have the link in the video link. Um, and again, shout out to our friends at Menagerie Pour because they do have some amazing pours and wine accessories that you can get for um, your holidays and for Christmas gifts. I mean, these are amazing things. I use mine all the time. Um, I have a dragon and like uh, uh, 
uh, bowl. Shout that... out to the province of Quebec for this <laughs> amazing spreadable cheese. Yeah, thanks Quebec for everything yeah. you do for us. Uh, oh man, they just had an election too. They got like their own kind of like yeah, I Donald saw that. Trump type guy. Yeah, they were talking about populist uh, kind of right wing dude. Yeah. That's interesting because that ends like uh, 50 years of two party rule. That's the first non liberal, non PQ yeah. leader. Um, if you're watching this from outside of Canada and you don't know what the fuck we're talking Canadian about, Canadian politics is. It's boring. It's, it's really boring. boring. If you've been no watching stuff in the States, no I mean, it's sort of tragic, but it's also like really entertaining because it's like, oh my God, this is actually happening in a country this advanced. Here, it's Mwah. sort of like, well, oh, Trudeau went to India and paid $100,000 for a plane or whatever, right? Like their, their lunch bill was Scandal. Bucks. Scandal. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Jerry's been trying to wrap this up. Yeah. Um, cheers to all the Canadians uh, for Thanksgiving. I don't know if you'll see this before Thanksgiving, but cheers. And cheers to everybody else. Uh, enjoy your wine. Check out Wine Beast Show uh, at Wine Beast Show on Instagram. Follow us on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Comment, subscribe, like, share. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Cheers, guys. Cheers.